Hey everybody, it's David Caroline Luthier, and we're here for uh, part six of our video series on uh, constructing a tenor conversion neck for a 1925 Vega Style M tubophone. Uh, if you remember from the uh, previous videos, what we have here is a, uh, a 1925 Style M tubophone conversion. Uh, the original conversion neck was very poorly done. It's not fitted well, looks kind of crude, and it doesn't fit the playing style of the customer so we are constructing a whole new neck for this banjo and in the previous videos we have constructed our blank got everything cut out in the very last video we got our final shape down and it's starting to look like a banjo neck so we've got a few little details we got to do before we can get down to the cosmetic stuff making this look pretty so so what we're going to be doing today is going to be we're going to drill out our holes for our tuners. So I've already laid them out here and here for the fifth string. And we're also going to be adding some binding to this. The original neck was bound, as was the conversion neck, the original crappy conversion neck. And we're also going to be adding a frailing scoop to this neck. Uh, Vegas did not originally have frailing scoops. That's more of a modern innovation for old time banjos, but it's very common. It helps you to play it over the neck and still have a nice easy playing action. You see that a lot of modern old time banjos. So we'll be doing that as well. And uh, once we get all that done, it's pretty much we get it sanded, we get our inlays in, and this thing will be ready to finish and fret. So let's go on and get started on that. So we're starting with a smaller drill bit. We're going to step this up and I'll find the size. So we'll just check out the We've got our holes for tuners on the Headstock drilled out. Tuners fit in nicely. They're nice and symmetrical. Now we got to deal with this fifth string tuner. Something you don't see on any any other instrument other than the banjo. And I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'm not going to use a drill press. I'm actually going to start an old timey hand crank drill. I like using these for drilling on weird contours like this because I can go as slow as I want to and control it, and the drill bit will not wander. Uh, but this is actually going to be a tapered hole because the fifth string tuner you can see has a slight taper to it and it's supposed to really just drive in there with no glue or no screws or anything. I usually put a dab of glue on it just so it doesn't fall out. But really it's a tapered hole and this is kind of driven in there. So we're going to start with the drill. We want to finish it up with our nice little reamer here that's specifically made for this purpose. I generally drill this hole down to where I hit the truss rod cavity where I know I'm deep enough. I'm going to start with a small bit, then we'll step it up to a bit and drill a hole big enough for my reamer to fit into, and then we'll taper it out with the reamer. Or a bigger drill.
see the truss rod. See, it just starts in there. This will take it down where we have the right fit. I have a mark on my reamer so I know how far down to take it. I know that it will go all the way down. Fits in there nicely, almost all the way down without having to hammer it. I'll tap that in with a hammer when we're ready to do it with a dab of glue. We're not really there yet, so get back out. So next thing we'll be doing here is we'll be cutting a frailing scoop. Uh, a lot of claw hammer banjo players like to play with their hand over the end of the fretboard rather than over the head. So it's a pretty common thing these days to see a scoop just wood removed over the very end of the fretboard so you kind of lose the last couple frets here. But it gives you better clearance. You can get your thumb up under the string to, to pluck. Your fingers doesn't hit the top of the fretboard. Makes it a lot easier. I don't Myself as a claw hammer banjo player, I don't typically play over the end of the fretboard, so I don't put scoops on my personal banjos. But uh, he requested a scoop, and specifically one of this uh, S-shaped scoop. Sometimes it will come straight across. When you do this kind of S-shape, that allows clearance for your thumb on the fifth string, while still maintaining a little bit better access to the upper frets. Kind of counts for the shape of your hand when you're playing claw hammer, maintaining as much of the frets as possible. So we want to have our router clamp a router template clamped onto the neck here. We'll take a router and we'll follow this guide and we'll take this basically down past the fret slots. It helps if you plug it in. Okay, next thing we'll have the router and all the mess that it makes up here. We'll go ahead and add our binding to the fretboard. And we're going with a uh, kind of a cream colored binding, kind of an aged white look. So we're going to be doing that with, uh, we have our router here with a ball bearing guide. It's just a touch smaller than our blade. Just to kind of channel the same thickness as our binding so that we can have a nice clean, flush place to glue our binding to. So we'll go ahead and do that.
Yeah, it's better than that. As you can see here, we got two nice, neat channels for our binding to go into. You can see our binding right here. We'll glue right in there, then we will trim it down where it's flush. And we've left a little bit of ebony here, so we have a nice kind of contrast here. We can go from mahogany to ebony to the white binding, or off-white binding, rather. And that's the way the original neck was done, so we're going to do the same thing. Let me get this glued on. Okay, as you see here, we got our binding glued into those channels. We have it's nice and flush. I'm going to take a little bit of sanding just to get it perfect, but our nice little trim here. And all we have left to do, as far as anything major structural work, is we have to cut this heel to fit our rim. And we have to do our inlays. Once we get those two things out of the way, it's just a matter of sanding, fretting, and we can go ahead and spray finish on this thing. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss none of that. See you next time.